Hey, everybody, I want to welcome you to this week's edition of the Get Your Geek On podcast. As always, we are your hosts, Charles Kiewatz. Robert Dokes. I'm Anthony Arsenio. Coming to you in our new stool format to see if this works. Uh, hopefully, this is a stool softener and it makes the show a little more bright. But uh, <laughs> this week, we are wrapping up all the geek news in review and we are starting right off the top with some uh, great casting news that just broke before we started here. And a movie that's not really nerd-related, but the actress is, and I'm actually looking forward to this, and that is Margot Robbie has been cast as Tanya Harding Damn. in the movie I, Tanya. Interesting. Definitely going to suck. Is it going to go over her boxing career? <laughs> I, I don't know. The celebrity boxing. Did you see how Jack, like, when, like, Tanya she Harding got started? Ripped. She got ripped for, for, like, you know, when uh, uh, women's boxing became a thing, and she got, like, ripped. Like, her arms are huge. I, I don't know. I actually, that whole story to me is just hilarious. And what I have a little more vested interest in it at the movie theater where I work. Nancy Kerrigan is a regular. Like, she's there like every Saturday. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's going to be really weird because it's going to be like, I'm going to have to have the, that interaction with her when this movie comes out. Like, she she, are you going to, to see, see it? it? No, like, but yeah. he, I think she just boycotts that and burns the place down. There's no way. There's <laughs> no way you just <laughs> go see that. See it's, like, it's, like, it's like you basically watch in there and she walks in. It's like, you know, every time if every movie theater that this is, place is playing out, I'm just going to burn it down. I'd be showing up to the burnt out record. <laughs> Like, what about payroll? Did payroll somebody? Is there anybody from payroll to get my check? I need to talk to my manager. And then in a little bit more superhero casting news, not more casting is much more of a confirmation. We have word that Daryl from the infamous Thor sketch will be appearing in Thor Ragnarok. Oh, really? And we have gotten word that not only will his role be expanded in the Marvel Universe, but Taika Waititi will be directing short sketches with all the Avengers having their own Daryl-style person oh, that they harass awesome. in their daily lives. They're and like, we were talking like assistant. while you we were gone, uh, just like what Robert Downey Jr. Literally, like it's just some Jamba Juice employee that can't leave, so he like <laughs> has to listen to him. Like stupid things like that. But uh, the idea of bringing Daryl into Thor, I love. I can't yeah, wait to great. see what they're gonna do. And it's the idea that they're kind of making that sketch continuity almost. So I really love that because that, that's the best use of Thor I've seen in the Marvel Universe was that one little one-off skit. So definitely like to see that Taika Waititi is bringing that sense of comedy into that. Now what are you guys' thoughts? I mean obviously it's a small sketch Sketch, but are you happy to see Daryl coming in the movie? Yeah, I yeah. love that little short that they did. That was so funny. I just love like how honest, like just regular duty is like, yeah, this guy's not a Norse god or anything. He's just my annoying roommate. Like, so I, I love that aspect of it. I'm really excited to see what they're doing with that. But uh, obviously, a couple of trailers broke the internet this week. So moving on to those, we have to start off with. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which I just called a clickbait trailer. There was nothing in that trailer. There was literally like the quick little dialogue. Didn't need to be. I, everyone's just looking for the baby Groot at the well, end. Well, he even said, uh, what, what's his name, James Gunn? Yep. He said that the trailer's coming soon. This is just something to hold you over until that gets there. Yeah, I, but I mean, to go through all the thing of like, oh, it's been classified. Oh, we're getting a trailer this week. Oh, we're doing the, like the way that they rolled it out was like, you're actually going to get some story. And it's like, that was literally just clickbait porn. No, I mean, what were your thoughts on the first Guardians trailer? There are some who don't dance, and there are some who dance. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. <laughs> no, I, I don't want a hug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's great. I love the little Groot reveal at the end too. Yeah. Yeah. Like the biggest Christmas toy that you're ever gonna see for baby next Groot, Christmas. Yeah. Or just watching baby. Yondu walk around with like the big mohawk. That yeah, was really with cool. His fin. That was really cool. I like the nebula stuff. I like the whole little drag that you just need to find a woman who is pathetic like you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you need a hug? Like I love that they're putting a little more comedy on the drag side of it, but I mean really nothing to reveal. I think the trailer that really took the interwebs by storm. And I have to say, like, I actually watched the numbers on this trailer. It hit a million in twenty minutes, which is like insane for a That's trailer crazy. and then it hit 12 million within two hours what was it the logan trailer which for oh, those of you yeah. that are not paying attention the final wolverine movie hugh jackman's last stand we got our johnny cash themed oh, teaser don't, say, trailer. don't say that it was so don't, sad don't it was say so that. sad like it played to johnny uh, cash's i cut myself okay. today or whatever the I name of that myself, song is but, uh, yeah. it's yeah. absolutely like heartbreaking to watch this trailer but i was i mean obviously we got the x23 reveal we got our first look at stephen merchant as uh cabal or whatever the leader of the morlocks he's the dude all taped up there uh, my whole question is how is xavier still alive at this point like we're so far down I know, the I've been watching I've been watching so much Star Trek Next Generation so Hello. I saw him just like as such an old man laying in that hospital bed and it just broke my heart and the one thing I like in the trailer Picard. You see, obviously, Xavier using his powers at some point, because there's that scene of, like, Logan and X-23 crawling on the floor. It's like everything is vibrating. So you can tell that that's Xavier causing it. But, I mean, what are your first impressions from this trailer? I mean, do you think they're going to kill him? I, I, I got to start there. I mean, based on everything. Logan or, or Logan, Xavier? I, I think Xavier is going to die. I think that's a given. Like, that, that Patrick Stewart's wanted a good way to go out. And I've heard him saying that he didn't really see how, after this movie, they could use his Xavier again. So that's all but said that they're going to kill him. But do you think they kill Logan? Do you think mm. that Hugh Jackman goes out with the character dead? Is that how they close that loop? I think that's how they do it. 
Um, I think that'd be at least the most poetic way to do it. It's so sad to me because he's one of those two characters. He's, he's one of the two uncastables to me, Robert Downey Jr. and Hugh Jackman, just the two dudes that have been by. I'm so right it's like, there with I, you. Want, I want that loophole left open, just something where he could come back. Because it, it all boils down to money. Let's face it. I mean, if somebody throws the right dollar amount at him, he'll put the claws yeah, on Yeah, but again. I mean, it's, he's going to put the claws on again, but I also think it's for the right company because right now we see where Fox is going. Well, he's always said that he wants to fight the Hulk. That's like yeah. the thing. And so, so, I mean, if they ever got to that point, you know he would bring it back in a heartbeat. So it's like, yeah. I want. That little, that's really, like, uh, let's be honest, if that's why I want a loophole left open, because I want to be able to see him fight the whole And it's not to point. say that that can't happen, but right now, you know, Fox is closing the loophole on this one. Um, I am getting, however, though, one of my top three moments of all-time cinema history that I wish would happen. I don't know that you guys would be as excited about this, but news broke this week that the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them franchise has been expanded to five movies, which... Absolutely thrilled about. It. I guess if it had always been the plan, they they just set three as a placeholder, and then they're like, we're gonna see what she writes. But it's turned out to be five movies, and J.K. Rowling confirmed that not only will we see Dumbledore and Grindelwald's relationship build over these movies because it takes place in the twenties, we will see the oh, much it's a famed, prequel. Yes, we will see the battle, the Dumbledore versus Grindelwald battle, which is referred to in the Harry Potter books as the greatest wizard duel of all time. With the original actor? Yeah, with uh, they haven't said who's gonna come back yet as Dumbledore because it's the young Dumbledore. Oh, okay. So you're able to do it, but they're gonna express like the whole. Because if you know the Harry Potter mythology, Dumbledore and Grindelwald were friends at first. They tried to find the Hallows. Grindelwald split, became the Dark Wizard, like the first Voldemort, basically. And then Dumbledore had to take him down, and that's how he got the Elder Wand, was in that duel. So that duel has so much significance to the Harry Potter universe. It was like the one... It, that is the dumb. That's the Hulk versus Wolverine of the Harry Potter world. That's the battle you never got to see. That you, so like the idea of that... I, mean, I know that you guys aren't... The, like the Potterhead and me. I'm like three weeks till I'm at Wizarding World. But I mean, what are your thoughts on this franchise going to five movies now? I think five movies is a lot. Yeah, I, but I mean, I'm not... I'm obviously not as invested as you are. It's a but, whole new era, though. Like, she can explore yeah, can so see much. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought three would be pretty solid... Because trilogies seem to just work. Well, there's also rumors that the final two movies, if they're not Beast movies, they may be... There's two possibilities I've heard, that they either do five Beast movies, or they do three or four Beast movies, and the other two are Beetle the Bard and Quidditch Through the Ages, the other school books okay, that were put yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. The Beetle the Bard I see, because that makes for a nice three-act, like it's three separate fairy tales. That is the, but I don't ever see the Quidditch Through the Ages one being made. No. I think by that point it'll be so late in the game that no one's going to care I mean, about with Quidditch. this whole new era of magic, it's really cool. The whole, like, everything they've been putting out about, like, the, 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 trailer, American, the trailer looks amazing. Well, the, the cool thing that, like, they put out, um, she wrote this thing on Pottermore, like, the history of magic in America is building up to the movie. So, you know, like, they don't have a wizard prison in America. If you do anything, they just kill you in the street. Like, that's it. You're just executed. So that's why, like, it's so crazy that his bees get out and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. Because, like, dude, we're just going to kill you. Like, if we find you, you're dead. Yeah. And that's just how Look they roll it. wizard cops, man. <laughs> Brutal. He's, dude, but that's what Colin Farrell is in that movie. He's the, the cop chasing them down. And then and he kind of... Are they auras? He, they, they don't call them auras there. It's uh, Makusa, the Magical Congress of the United States oh, of America. so American. And they don't even call them muggles muggles. They call them nomadges. And they have a rule that you're not even allowed to be friends with them. You're not allowed to talk to them. You're not allowed to befriend them. You're not allowed to marry them. Nothing. If you do, you're executed. Classic American. No, Salem witch trials caused it all. But I, needless to say, without getting into that, the reason that we're here, really, is we come together every week to review the magical shows that are the CW's weekly lineup. Vampire and, Diaries. And how can we talk about the Vampire okay. Diaries and Jane the Virgin? All right, people, let's spill the beans. Oh, man. Can Jane. we just say that Jane the Virgin is, like, the single worst show I've ever seen? I've never watched an episode it of it. It is so bad. You watched it? I don't know if it's a... How did it win awards? I don't know if it's a parody of a soap opera or what, like, if it's self-aware, but it is so How does the bad. CW have, like, that wide right... There's a whole point of their programming that's, like, the Kotex coming into their period 13-year-old girl crowd... And then there's, like, the guys like us that are, like, Flash, Mainline, and that shit. I just can't believe Such it. A, I, a, I, that's, I can't. That show. I mean, she does. She's not. She has a baby now. Okay, so what she's more a, to do? It, it would have worked. It's like best how they call it teen series. mom now that they're all like twenty five and yeah. on their fourth kid. It's like you're not teen moms anymore. Uh, so so say, we start the Monday night lineup off every week as we do with Supergirl. As we got our second dose of Tyler Hecklin Superman this week, and I gotta say, all the haters can finally back off. There's been so much call for, oh, we want to spin off with him and this and that. Now, for everybody that was jumping down his throat when those first picks came out, eat your words now. But uh, we got our first look at two Metallos this week, which I thought was a little weird to throw that second one in there. It's like you get you kind of whip that guy together really cool little, fast. There's a cool little twist though. Yeah, to have the both give them, them both something to but do. But I gotta say, Supergirl in its second episode now, third episode, second or third episode, third. second, third. 
Second. But uh, it's second. It is a, yeah, it is yeah. a second because Tyler Hecklin. But I gotta say, it feels so much more at home in the CW. The cinematography, the acting, the special effects, everything seems to have upped its game since last season. I mean, it's starting to become my my second show behind the Flash. Honestly, the two episodes of Supergirl, I enjoyed watching more than I enjoyed watching the last two episodes of the Flash. Really, I love the Flash. The Flash is my favorite show, but I had so much fun watching Superman do his thing. It's like I, I you know what I gotta to see the I gotta agree with you. There's just the nostalgia factor of seeing like the Infinite Crisis scene a of him holding Superman. her there. Just seeing a happy, a happy Superman, Superman that likes being Superman. He loves being Superman and he's good at it. That, which I really like. Like the, and just the chemistry of this cast has come together really well. David Harrowwood, who was the guy that I kind of until they revealed him as Manhunter. Even after the I felt he was a little stiff in his performances last season, stuff like that. He seems to be bringing, like, the whole, ba- like, wins little line there. Oh, my God, Superman's about to fight the Martian Manhunter. Watching, this uh, is terrible. This watching is awesome. Martian Manhunter and Superman work together to defeat Metallo is so like, it's cool. it's just... That was some Justice League like, stuff. If you ever really thought, like, hey, man, there's going to be these badass action scenes with Superman and Martian Manhunter and stuff. If anybody told you, yeah, it's going to be in a show called Supergirl. Like, would you have ever thought Supergirl would bring in... The characters in the history. I mean, we're going to get Linda Carter as the president next week. We get Miss Martian next week. Like, huge things are coming. They're obviously setting up Cyborg Superman, and as we the, saw with the Cadmus Lab. What's her face left? And, sure. and we, yeah, we lost Callista Flockhart, which we knew was going to happen. Is she gone, though? Is she just we, gone? No, they, they're leaving it. Oh, the whole thing right now is with Harrison Ford being off filming Blade Runner. Like, it's leaving her to take care of the family and stuff like that, so they're way more oriented with that. Like, she's L.A.-based, whereas now that they're in Vancouver, it's a lot harder for her. It's too bad I was really sad to see her go. She had such a great monologue for I, her. It, it, it was the monologue of, like, I know you're Supergirl. Pretty That's much, what yeah. that was. Like, use your power, like, that whole type of thing. But I love that they, like, they went off on that. Like, I know you're Supergirl. I know this is, like, part of the ruse that you got to do. I know that your cousin is super. Like, her sweat in Clark Kent was one of the most hilarious things to me. Like, the whole thing. Because you, you saw her as, like, Watching this. Watching him walk away. She's this pillar. The whole show like first season everything she's like the essence of like female power stuff like that. and to see her melt into a 12 year old like is he here like th- just hilarious because it's so it's out like, of character how's but, your relationship with lois is it still working yeah. <laughs> it's like but in the like really? even well, to be fair clark has that super butt well one of the things i hate was like the the tension between alex and clark like of her being like oh did you not remember that he abandoned you with us and stuff like that it's like yeah because he had to go save He's the super world man. like excuse me i'm sorry that raising a 12 year old prepubescent girl was not number one on his list of priorities like give the dude some slack and they make it seem like they're way farther apart than they are oh yeah like they make it seem like it's like a tw- you can fly like it's literally and not a- only that you're faster than the speed of light like you're, Which, well not maybe not speed of light but you but I like fast. that they're actually starting to use their powers in everyday lives, which is a perfect segue here because we, we move over to Tuesday night's lineup with The Flash. Number one thing, we got to see some West Allen shipping, but I love that Barry finally used his powers for like a date. Just whisk her off to like yeah. Coast City somewhere or something like that. And then he's like, I gotta go. Just, and he left her. That's the part that like had me going crazy. It's the fact that he left her there. There wasn't even that one line of like, like hey, hey, you were my ride. Like, how, do I, how do I get home? They just show, they show me that one little like cutaway that after the credits of Iris holding your heels walking down the highway. Truly, like, though, it did make me really happy to see like Barry and Iris in like the throes of their relationship. It's absolutely it's so nice good. to see them. I like what they did with Magenta, too. Like, first of all, bringing a character mm. with mental disabilities and not portraying them in this light of oh this is some crazy person that needs to happen and I don't know I found a little bit more I'm a foster kid so like I appeal a little bit more to that character anyway of like understanding what it's like to have like an abusive foster parent that side of it and I can see how that split can happen but what were your thoughts on first of all the fact that alchemy now it's been revealed that his power is restoring the powers that people had in Flashpoint I mean it's a big deviation from the character in the comics I really like it because it kind of explains their use of the Sorcerer's Stone Philosopher's Stone as they're calling it but so what are your thoughts on this new quote-unquote power for alchemy and how they're using it in the show? Um, I th- honestly think that we still have a lot to be revealed for him. I love how many people commented online this week, like, alchemy sounds like Jigsaw. I just wanted to smack them through my really? computer. Really? I had no really? idea. Come on, Internet. It's just what you can do. But I mean, the sounds idea like Jigsaw? of him, obviously... He is Jigsaw. Come on. He, he restores <laughs> people's powers, and we saw a whiny, bitchy... Hot topic Wally all episode. Like, I didn't get powers. Hmm. And I think what it is is they laid the seat. He's having the dreams. Because when they talked to Magenta about, like, how did you find out? Like, how did you become this? She said it started with dreams of a different life. And then I heard this man's voice calling to me. And then that's how she met Alchemy. And the moment she said I was having dreams about the past, like, like Wally, if you watch it again, like, he looks away and has this moment. And that's when he has to leave. So you can tell he's having the dreams of the Flashpoint universe right now. So it's going to come to Alchemy giving him his powers. 
It's just a question of does he use him to be a villain? I mean, do you see them turning Wally Doll this season? No. Hmm. He's the Kid Flash, baby. Uh, but I don't know, man. Mm. We, uh, we got the, it makes sense to me. Like, they're definitely going to the point that Alchemy's going to give him his powers. He's having the dreams. That's why he thought, like, oh, I just got to jumpstart my powers, this and that. Like, he's, he's clearly experiencing some Flashpoint side effects. Oh, can we talk about how cool Jesse Quick's uniform looks like? It's just the trajectory uniform of the it's badge. So sick. It's just trajectory. It, but it had look. the black lightning bolt. But, okay, so but cool. here was my thing. Like, cool. Keep trajectory's outfit because you had a speedster's outfit, stuff like that. Don't give her just the domino mat. Like, give her a cow. Give her something. Like, Did we see her in the suit? In the preview for next week. She okay. saw it, like, in the reveal. Which, speaking of next week, like, we'll get to it, but Mirror Master, like, oh, hello, I forgot about that. hello, Mirror Master, and Mirror just Master's a little bit. Mirror my the, favorite rogue. He's absolutely the favorite rogue, and the way that they're doing him yeah, is, like, cool. incredible. Uh, hey, I'm stuck in a mirror. Is this me, my All mirror? Right. But, uh, I mean, they're doing great things, but to Magenta, which we obviously saw, uh, I think it's only the third villain that they've faced, but not captured. Like, the fact that they let her go or at killed. the end was really cool but i feel like that's a really bad mistake like with the mental health aspect of like you know she's a documented schizophrenic like it's not really her choice in whether or not she keeps the magenta personality at bay also the return of harrison wells which Very i love welcome. and I, I really hope they find an excuse to keep him around. send jesse back to earth too. do what you gotta do but i mean you need to keep wells around you need that mind and i'm gonna have to have a hashtag on the here just no frostbite. He, yeah, he just has so much. He has such good chemistry with the rest of the cast. I'm so mad with what this show is doing with Caitlin Frost. Hashtag no frostbite for me because I do not want them turning her into Killer Frost. It's the, my, the one thing I'm angriest about with the Flashpoint well, timeline. Well, Killer Frost is now a hero in the comics. I know, but it's, there's no way they they use her powers for good in this show. There's no way that they're going through. I read the episode description for the next episode. It's her going to her mom for help about her powers, and her mom becomes cold. And like you know, Kevin Smith's episode is titled Killer Frost. Like, it, and they're talking about all kinds of firsts in that episode. So I mean, it just seems like they're going down that road. I mean, what are your thoughts on potentially losing? Caitlin um, to the team uh, again we don't know I'm I am there are so much things where especially with the Fortnite crossover um I think they can't break up the way they can't break up team flash but with the Fortnite crossover I think if they do go that way they have an easy out with the dominators and whatever uh yeah but the, the four recent. episode crossover is meant to be just like a single bottle episode storyline no, and then don't it's, do it. it's not going to be like season Darn. wide consequences and stuff like that i want consequences I, I want i want reset i want retcon and reset and and it's this time it's not barry's problem so we have yeah, our first exactly. real speedster in the in the flash universe to be introduced other than the flash i mean this isn't a flashpoint wally that gets a race after episode jesse quick now has power she is a speedster do you see them bringing her back at all the team up against alchemy or sabotar I definitely think that what you said like months ago that she'll be the Flash of Earth three. Yeah, she's got like a, just a full on Flash uniform at this point. I love it, and I, I I love what they're doing with the show. I love the actress Violet Bean's really starting to grow on me. So yeah, I like what good. they're doing with her. I like that they made it seem like she was almost as fast as Barry, if not a little bit faster. I love the distinguished colors in the lightning. That is such a big deal to me, and it's such a minor thing, but it's like the thought that goes into it. Because each speedster's lightning, other than Flash and Reverse, has been a decidedly different shade of like orange, yellow, red, something like that. So there's mm -hmm. no comparison, which I really like. And seeing them run together, like. That was that was a really cool yeah, scene like for when me. She catches up and she's just like, "Oh hey, you need help?" He's like, "Yeah, I guess so." One thing that pissed me off is her clothes didn't catch on fire. Like that was one thing that we yeah. learned, like episode one with well, Barry. We don't we don't know what they could have. You know, fire retardant clothes in, in Earth Two. Or speed here was the other thing: is the seal the, the the roof of that building was getting caved in as they're running that figure eight. I'm like, that's yeah, some structural integrity problems that you guys speedsters just walk don't melt steel beams. Really? Nine <laughs> <laughs> Eleven was a conspiracy put on by the Central City Police Department. <laughs> Speedsters brought those towers down, man. <laughs> uh, so one of the other things really complaining, as we said, Wally complaining about his powers. I mean, does he get here? I guess this is the real question. Does he become Kid Flash in this timeline? Yes. Yes. All right. So that was it, simple. And is it too obvious that Tom Felton is Dr. Alchemy at this point? Yes. Here was the reason why I got it to me is at the very end of this week's episode when they see the footage from Central City PD of the rival being killed in his cell and he says Alchemy, Julian Doran says, Alchemy, you ever heard that name before? Al and like the way that he looks at him is like that, yeah, remember when I whooped your ass like two weeks ago, buddy? Like, <laughs> it's that looks. So, I mean, everybody said the same thing though in season one. Like, we learned in this first episode that Wells was like, He's got the reverse flash on. Everyone's like, oh, it's too obvious for him to be the reverse flash. And it's like, no, it wasn't. So I really think that he is going to be Dr. Alchemy. It explains why that there's no version of Dr. Alchemy that existed before because this guy wasn't in the show. I just don't see Tom Felton not being cast as a villain. Put it that way. You don't bring on Draco Malfoy and not make him a bad guy. 
<laughs> I'd like to have him be the good guy. Just because that would be such a good twist for me. Or he could be Savitar. Like, he could be... Mm, you know what? I wouldn't even have him do that. I would, I would, you know, I would say, well, I can't remember. I would, like, have him be Impulse or somebody from the future or some from an alternate oh. alternate timeline. Bart. Now, yeah. I can bring this one up in my rumor mill, and Ooh. I cannot name yeah. the source, but I can say for a fact that the source works on this show. So this is news that the internet is not going to break. I've been waiting to break this one. didn't want to tell you guys. So we actually have word on how Savitar is going to be brought into the Flash. I cannot say this, but it's actually going to happen on Legends. For those of you watching Legends of Tomorrow, they are currently dealing with the JSA in the 1940s, and they are dealing with Eobard Thawne. And all I can tell you is that there's going to be an episode with Eobard Thawne and the Legends, and that is going to create Savitar, and then Savitar will be brought onto the Flash from there. But, I mean, what are your thoughts on the ideas now of the shows are so well-networked and well-created that you can do that, that you can create a season big bad on another show using a villain from your show and bring him in that way. I think that makes sense because that's what they did last year. They used uh, they used Savage uh, to... Well, I like how they're adapting. Oh, it's yeah, like, he was on the Arrow crossover. He, he, yeah. And the Arrow crossover. Well, and... the rough points of the origin story that I have now is something happens that there's a fight with Thawne and the Legends try to counteract his power, creates a Speed Force Storm type thing that strikes... The pilot Savitar. So literally, mm -hmm. so they're kind of keeping his origin the same while putting their CW twist on it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the idea of bringing him in that way, I like it. I really like it because it shows the cohesiveness of the shows. Like uh, it shows that hey man, yeah, we can put this together on Legends. But I always thought that Legends was kind of like the garbage disposal last season. It yeah, was like yeah, yeah. the dudes that we couldn't they, really give their own show. We just no. threw it together. And season two feels much more like intertwined with well, Arrow they're giving them like their that. own legs and i think the fact that they're able to change out the team on a you know they're looking to change out the team in any some way shape or form gives them the ability to say okay we can have this you know we can have the viewers that we want on the show uh, do you some... think that it hurts viewership though with something like savitar being created on legends no. or do you think that it's going to it, drive uh, more viewers to legends i think it's going to drive more viewers to legends and so that they can have uh because they're definitely building a better audience uh in season two than they did in season one uh, especially with something we're going to talk about later, a show going in down the tubes very quickly. Um, it shows Arrow. No spoiler <laughs> here, people. Uh, God, that show's boring. It's, I, I honestly don't remember what happened this so week. So for those it of you that don't know, so like when we have to split up our outlines here, like we all watch most of the CW shows, but at the beginning of this CW season, we had to draw like a short story, basically, who was going to have to watch Arrow. Unfortunately, Anthony... Is that guy? So, Anthony, like, if we, if Anthony's not here, which is the reason why we had to wait today, we can't fill you in on Arrow because none of us can devote yeah, an hour what of our lives to that. Nothing. <laughs> Oliver Queen brooded. Felicity said something so, smart. Diggle said he's too old for this shit. And that's exactly what happened. And somebody shot arrows. <laughs> that's exactly what. Except not many people shot arrows. I will say the fight scenes have gotten pretty damn good but compared this, to last year. This, I mean, the last episode had uh, the the wrestler known as Cody Rhodes, who Stephen Amell had a, a SummerSlam match mm -hmm. with last year. At WWE who did he Super huh? Slam. Who did he, play? Uh, he was Stardust, right? Yeah, he was Stardust. He was Stardust. Uh, and that was the, he had that wrestling match, and so he was in the episode. In the the wrestling match was awesome, too. He lost, though. But, like, but. if the fact that they're bringing in WWE stars that bad, it's like, I really see, like, the Prometheus reveal, and, like, and Prometheus, and his name is John Cena! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I remember, I remember Oliver training the, Teen, guess Titan, he did the, the Diet Teen Titans, and, uh, no Salmon Ladder. Felicity bossed him around for a little while, and the episode ended. Yeah. Which brings us to Legends, which I think is actually really growing on quick. I mean, they come into the second episode. We get Citizen Steel's origin, which was really cool. I didn't watch it. But can we I talk about it. Obsidian? Oh, my God. Green Lantern's son has a badass scene where they fight. They basically go, Obsidian, turn off the lights. And this dude blacks out the entire sky. Like, they're in broad daylight. He blacks out all of, like, New York or wherever they are to complete pitch blackness. And the, the JSA just goes around and messes up the Legends. But, like, just to see... That oh, Green it's Lantern them. They connection. Fight the JSA. Oh yeah, that's how the episode <sighs> opens. Like, I watched that tonight. Oh dude, it, the first five minutes are them fighting each other and stuff like that. And like to see Star Girl split Firestorm was like one of the coolest things I I've love ever Star seen. Star Girl. Oh dude, she goes back and then her and Firestorm, like her and Jack, so are good flirting. In the comics too. 
She there, is like a tragic origin story as well. Well, speaking of tragic origin stories here, we got to find out why Rex Tyler came into Legends last season. We got to see what that story arc was. And spoiler for those of you that have not watched it, we actually got to see the death of Rex Tyler, our man, at the hands of Eobard Thawne, oh, the reverse snap. Flash. Turns out that our man had figured out Eobard's plan and time traveled to warn the Legends last season, which is why they got that message and actually show him as he's talking to them start blinking out of existence. And the reason he's blinking out is because reverse Flash is killing him in the 40s as it happens. So it's really cool to see what they're doing, bringing Eobard in and uh, the superpower syndrome that he's trying to give to the Nazis, which ends up getting in Ray Palmer's hands. And Ray almost takes it. Like, he almost gives himself powers, but they have to give it to uh, Nick, the historian that they're with now, because he's dying. Uh, but thoughts on what they're doing with this show, bringing in villains like that. I mean, obviously setting up some new heroes. They got Vixen to join the team in this episode, and then now you're going to see Citizen Steel get his powers next episode. I, I think what I like about the program is, what I like about the show is this. Again, uh, the roster changes. They're bringing in characters that may be underutilized by DC um, that may not necessarily warrant. It's, I think it's a good testing ground. Let's say somebody comes in really, you know, uh, a character comes in really well and they say, well, maybe this deserves a spinoff. All righty. And obviously, as we touch, as we finish up on the CW shows, we did get our previews for the next week, which shows us our first look at Mirror Master, the one rogue everyone has been waiting for in the Flash so series. Awesome. And I, I can't gotta tell you, two whole seasons just to get to him. Not only are they doing him so well as far as like the powers, the way that it looks of him jumping through the mirror, I like the fact that it's. He's Barry's nemesis. Like, Barry's t- trapped in the mirror. Just showing him trapped in that mirror in that episode tells me. They're going, like, hard with his powers, and it's going to be really hard to stop him. But uh, one of the reasons that I love Mirror Master and what I'm doing here, we're actually going to link a giveaway to this. So for those of you that are quick with the Google and can tell me Mirror Master's first Flash appearance, you will receive this badass Newberry's variant of Deadpool Back in Black number one, which is the new 80s set book where Deadpool bounds with the Venom symbiote. So just tell us Mirror Master's first appearance in the comics, and you will be the one to win that. So as we start to wrap up here this week, not a whole lot came out as far as casting news, things like that, but some great comics news. We did get that the Phantom Ring debuted this week, uh, which is the new Green Lantern ring that anyone can pick up. It powers multiple ends of the emotional spectrum. It's a little bit of a history-making thing there. Uh, We got a new Assassin's Creed trailer. Doesn't Mm. look that great. Uh, But the two bits of movie news that I want to wrap up here is our Movies That Will Suck segment, and that is they announced a Willy Wonka prequel is being made. By Burton? No. They, they haven't announced the director or anything like that. It's just the fact that it's being made. Now, we already got that creepy, creepy Johnny Depp one. Mm. What are your thoughts? Is, is nothing sacred? Nothing no. is sacred and I think anymore. It's, I think it's also even more... He so, just died. Like, like yeah, he, Gene Wilder just died. So I was like, yo, Willy Wonka, I like that movie. It just makes me movie. feel like they were waiting. Like, all right, as soon as this dude's dead, we hit green light. But, I mean, yeah. Thoughts on that? I, obviously, I think that's going to suck. There's no prequel book. Why don't they just make... The goddamn Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator movie. Well, it's, you have a sequel. Like, it just... It's written. And it's good. Here's my whole thing. The one movie that's on the edge for me, though, and I heard a lot of people like, oh, my God, this is going to be amazing because of what he just did with this movie and stuff like that. And I'm really conflicted. And that is John Favreau's Lion King. He's doing a live-action adaptation of Lion King like they did with the Jungle Book. Like, that's all Disney is doing now. For those of you that don't know, Disney has literally just reached a point where they're so out of stories. Their next, I believe, 12... Big movies are just live action versions Beauty of their the anime. Beast, Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella, Mulan, Little Mermaid. It's just endless. But now they've announced Fabro's doing The Lion King. And that is going to be one of those movies that is either going to become like one of the top 10 movies of all time or it's going to become one of the biggest box office flops. Uh, how do you retell that story? Why do you want to? This, it, it's <laughs> well, it's going to be like two hours of Wonka collecting. Oompa Loompas. Or you, are you talking? Planet. No, we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about Lion, Lion King, King right now. Oh God, Jesus! So now you have to live out that whole scene where you know we're gonna Scar, watch Mufasa Scar, die. Scar, yeah, like in literal life, it's like now. Here's my whole thing: if you don't bring back James Earl Jones as the voice of Mufasa, don't make this movie. That's that's honestly what I have to say about yeah. it. Do whatever you want. Cast whoever. <laughs> what the hell are you gonna want? do? Live action. There's no and honestly, bring back Nathan Lane as, Tim- to, as Timon and Pumbaa. Like. But the fact that James Earl Jones, that is one of like the most iconic animated voices to me. It's the voice of Mufasa. Like, and he's alive. He's kicking. Like, it's not like Tim Curry where he's like stroked out in a wheelchair. Like, does that not make sense to anybody? Like, is Tim Curry stroked out in a wheelchair? Yeah, you see, like they had to bring him on like Rocky Horror Picture Show. They had to like he can't even like say his own name anymore. Oh snap! Yeah, it's that bad. Like, it's like he's like if you re- like if you remember him on Psyched a few years like, like, like ten Clark years ago. 
like he looks ancient wheelchair wow. bound like yeah, yeah. Like, and so him but like james l jones is still around does it. and kicking like he was just on big bang theory like last season hmm. he's doing rogue one yeah oh yeah like oh that's what i'm saying it's like the dude's in the voiceover game hmm. like we have to talk about Rogue One real quick. Yeah. No, we don't need to talk about this movie. I'm so like over this movie. To, I'd like to talk about it. Yeah, it is just two things. This preview looks, I am either, it is either going to be really good or really bad. It's going to be really bad. Really, I think it's going to be really, awesome. I, I I have no idea yet because every prequel, every every uh, trailer I see is like, oh, this could be good. And the next one's like, I don't know about this. There's no Jedi. There's not a lightsaber fired up the whole movie. You don't need it. No. I do. That's the only reason I go see a Star Wars. I go see a Star Wars movie because I know in the last 20 minutes, two dudes so, are going to duke it out with light swords. And That's one of the them is, one of them is going to lose their hand. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I know that somebody is going home or learning to be ambidextrous. Uh-huh. Like somebody has got to go home. And in some of the movies, both legs and both arms. But it's just, it just blows. I my have mind. the high ground. <laughs> but wait, so random like knowledge that I heard. Did you hear that there's like an award-winning cut of the Star Wars prequels? It's 85 minutes. It's, it's all three cut into one, and it was cut by Topher Grace. Yep, did hear about that, and it was gone. It's gone now. No, I found a link to it. Like I was gonna say, if Ooh, either of you guys want to watch it, yeah. Like if you wanted to watch, it, I like actually want to watch it. I, everything I've read on it says that it is like seriously I know that revolutionizes. Only like six or seven minutes from the Phantom Menace. Yeah, it's it's eighty five <laughs> minutes total, and he cut together all the. But apparently, it will like revolutionize the yeah, way that you look it, at the prequels. It makes like a solid prequel. I think that's something we should do a commentary track on, honestly, because it's not licensed or anything like that, so we can even air audio from it. Mm. Okay. So in the well, we're we're, lu- we're lucky enough to hear on that show we fall under the YouTube context of a review, so we're allowed to use a lot of different footage and mm-hmm. things like that. But we wrapping things up this week. Is there anything you guys wanted to touch on? Yeah, you guys have you any of you? Oh, let me try that again. Have any of you watched Westworld yet? Yes, he was, I have, we were actually just talking, talking about, about that. that. What do you think? I I have I have enjoyed it. Have you ever seen the Have you seen the movie? Not the original one. Not the one that Not the one that um, Kubrick did. No. Okay. So. Uh, I have not seen the original, but I, I've enjoyed it just because I enjoy HBO style. I like the casting in it. The whole cast the is so entire, good. It's like you have Anthony Hopkins. Uh, Who's terrifying. It's like who is just like he's gone. It's like that Hannibal Lecter moment. You're like, oh, now I remember why I'm afraid of him. The people that cast as the androids, they kill it. Yeah. When they're just like when they're in android mode and he's yeah. like, all right, analyze mode. And they switch. You just see it in their face. It just yeah. goes straight to Tandy like Newton, robot. James Marsden. Um, I'm not excited about Westworld. However, I am excited to start watching American Horror Story Roanoke because the whole season they were like, oh, when we get to episode six, there's this massive twist. And I was like, yeah. I'm not even going to start. So Westworld's episode six. scarier. But, so, uh, yeah, go into Westworld. Well, well, you, you, you guess, yeah, Westworld's fine. But the thing I wanted to bring up, we, we haven't talked about it. And I have Luke talked Cage. to Luke Cage. Oh, yeah. and how terrible it was. We haven't uh, even gotten uh, into All right, this. so. Here's the thing, black right, people. Do our Luke Cage bit yeah, here. black people don't get mad at me. This thing is gonna. Um, <laughs> black people get mad at me. No. All right, so two things. It, it was too long, and this suffers from the Marvel. Yeah, but this one was extended. Like it was like we're saying were, it, it was be. like it should have ended at episode six. It, it was done. And that's saying something because normally we say it's thirteen. It should end at ten. This mm-hmm. should have ended at. It's six. like it should have ended at six because you killed off a character. Spoilers. Who you was know, supposed to this point. If you haven't watched Luke Cage, go fuck yourself. Like, <laughs> if you have not seen this, if did you, you bleep yourself? I did because I'm, like, I'm saving Robert the word. <laughs> so, you, if you have not seen this, I, I there was a point in time where I got lost in it. Uh, the music, I could say, the music's great. I think some of the message is a little over too preachy at times. I've said it. Uh, I've said it off air when in comments. I liked Luke Cage's character better on Jessica Jones, and I actually liked it in. The show. I feel like that they said that this thing was gonna like do big things for Harlem. I'm like, all it did for Harlem is tell me I never want to live there. <laughs> it's like, like hey ever. guys, let's it's like, hey you. guys, remember every racial stereotype you thought yeah. about Harlem? Yeah, they're, they're all there. true. They're there. They're there. But it's like I think it took away from his character. Um, and I have no idea where they're gonna go from here. Um, I do not want. Luke Cage and the Night Nurse to be hooking up, that's for sure. The closest, uh, to, the closest thing to me, though, the way that I actually have to compare it, like coming from from the critics aspect of it, is I look at it as it's like for six episodes, I was reading Luke Cage, and then I turned to Page, and it's like reading Game of Thrones. Like it's that, it was that mm. different of a story. It's two completely different stories. There it's is. like they tried to merge two seasons. Well, there's the Cottonmouth story, then there's the Diamondback story. But that's story. two seasons. Like, yeah. that's oh, like yeah. And that's the way they should have gone. It should have ended at six, and you could have drawn that Diamondback story out. 
to episode 13. That's why really and you could, you could have honestly split that and then said, hey, that is our Luke Cage season, season two. two. So going into Defenders, you're already like, we don't even need to film that. Yeah, we can just release that's that. That's why I really hope that the Punisher series is just a mini series. Well, like we were talking, Anthony, this is something I wanted to get your opinion because honestly, I'm like, where do you go from the Defenders? Like they've announced Daredevil season three, but and this is my Jessica point. Jessica Zone season two. When we built to the Avengers, after the Avengers happened, the Avengers were in the other movies, like yeah. in Iron Man movies, things like that. How do you not have that with the defender? You can't build up to the defenders and then go to Daredevil season three and it's him fighting people by himself when he's like, dude, I got Iron Fist and Luke Cage on speed dial. Why are these people not here helping? Like, honestly, <laughs> that's the point of the Avengers. What they should do, and I know they won't, is make a Spider Man series. So well, I think you could do Spider Man twenty ninety nine. If you're going to do a Netflix series, twenty ninety nine. Mm-hmm. You don't need you don't need a single thing in the Mar- Marvel continuity. You develop your own continuity right there. Mm-hmm. It, just a, having having Spidey. In like the Defenders world, don't you just want to see Matt Murdock open up the shade, or like have Foggy Nelson open up the shade at the office, and Spidey's there, like, "Hey, can I use your bathroom?" <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm waiting for that because like right, there are things we've talked about, and I don't want to keep going over. Like one, you need to have a larger connection to the MCU, which, which Foggy said is it's it, gonna be, his quote today was like, "It's all about timing," which means it's not gonna happen. happen. Yeah. It's not it's about time. It's not about timing anymore. Like we need to have those things as fans because you're not. It's yeah. becoming like S.H.I.E.L.D. to me, the it, way it, they casually mention stuff, but it doesn't affect yeah, the Yeah, and it's like, and S.H.I.E.L.D., for whatever, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. can, in that's a terrible train wreck. Um, if Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. can talk about the Suyakovi Accords and Luke Cage, and they can't talk about them, then we have a problem in Passage of Time. Um, some of the things that have else <laughs> happened, and like, especially when Spider-Man Home- Homecoming comes out, if I do not hear mention of Devils of Hell's Kitchen, the Jessica Jones guy, uh, Jessica Jones, and or that he's guy, there. he's there, the street he's like, them. you're in Queens, come on, dude. Well, here's my thing, and this is one of the things I got to peg it for, and Robert, you and I were talking about, so I want to get Anthony's opinion on it too. The other thing, the problem with me is there was no interaction with the other defenders. There was no more linking that group up. Whereas we had that in Jessica Jones, yes. well, Rosario Dawson's mentioned that you but get that's the only person. But you had the Nightmares. But there was no setting up of, oh, there's this guy we might have heard of, the Iron Fist. Dawson there's was this, really good. She's yeah. really good, but I hope they don't kill her bring the other. But my whole thing is now you're dumping a lot onto Iron Fist, which was already coming into things with controversy because the whitewashing and Finn Jones being – and, like, the casting of what it was. But now, in the comic now, books. <laughs> but now not only are you dumping into – like, at least in Jessica Jones, we got Luke's origin, or at least a quick version of it. Now, not only with Iron Fist are you having to do, oh, we have to develop this dude's origin, set him up in this world, but now you have to lay the groundwork of everything you didn't do in Luke Cage yeah. with tying the universe together and giving them a I reason to come together. I think Hogarth is going to be in Iron Fist as well. Yeah, the yeah, so Jenny Hogarth is going to be like... Or but it's like you have a lot of work to do to bring to the Defenders, which because Iron Fist is your last one wow. before Defenders. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like you kind of, they wrote themselves into before, a corner there. Before Punisher Defenders coming out? Yeah. 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 Punisher, we aren't getting until 2018. Oh. They're shooting now. But, but we're not getting until 2018. God only knows what they're shooting. And but the, when, but people. And the other thing you got to figure is now that they're setting the links for Runaways on Hulu, there's all kinds of things that are being said, too. There's huge news in Doctor Strange that the Dormammu and that the other uh, Runaway li- references are way bigger than we thought they were. They're, like, huge to set that okay. up. All right. Where would you like it to go after I, Defenders? I honestly, I think you can only, if you're not going to bring them into the MCU, you can only do Netflix series. Like, you have to make that decision. They're either, A, never going to join the MCU lineup, or B, they are, and you can go from there eventually. But I think if you're going to do what it is right now, which is they're not in the MCU, you can't do the Defenders and then not have them in each other's shows. I'm not saying they need to be there all the time, but I'm saying, like, for for Daredevil, if he's going to fight 10 episodes of Bullseye or something like that, I want to see in episodes 9 and 10 Luke Cage and Iron Fist coming to help him or some shit like that. They don't need to be used heavily, but they need to be used because you can, there is no storyline where you're going to justify to me that he has to do this by by himself himself now. Absolutely. Not with the network that you've spent these four series developing of Rosario Dawson and, and placing these chess pieces, you need to finish the game. Yeah. That's the way that I'm looking or at it right now. Or now that you have these pl- all the players on the board, now you can't not use them you in some way. And sure. and two to three episodes a season, I'm not saying that's much at all, but no, you need and, and to it, have that. And you again, need to have what Luke Jones, what, what Luke Cage was not Jessica Jones. Exactly. You need to have that from now on with every series. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be all of them. It can be one. Like, it could be Heroes for Hire. That could be your next series. That's what yeah. I honestly think you do. I think that you do Heroes for Hire, That's and then the you do a two. Punisher Daredevil one. And that allows you to blend in two different sections of the universe. You can have Jessica Jones be your floater if you want. Jessica Jones always works better as a solo. It, it does, Anyways. but that's that can be your one solo one, and you can get away with that because it's that it's, you've got the built-in bottle episodes of like the well, investigations. What I always loved about Alias, uh, the comic that Jessica Jones is based on, is that like even in her first case in the book, 
is her investigating Captain America because he's at like some broad's house. You know what I mean? Just having like glimpses of like the fact that she's in this crazy weird I can deal with I can deal with it being separate, but I can't deal with this whole will they won't they Ross and Rachel bullshit about it of like are they ever gonna bring a Netflix in it? No, like no, if they're, they're not. They're, no, but not you know they're, they're you know they're there because they talk about the movies. But that's the whole point. Again, like okay, so it just feels like a it, wink. And, and it's like I'm tired of the winking. I don't want to be winked at. You're flirting too much. I can't do this anymore. Yeah, and it's like goose. you know, it's like it's like it's a Cock tease. So, you took the word. I was just waiting to see it. I was like, is Robert going to say it or am I going to yes, get bleeped? Yes, I'm going to say it. It's a cock tease. And so you're going you're gonna to have this moment where... Ship up or put out. out. You know, put out. Put out. Give us what we want, Marvel. Prom Give night. us what we want. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the idea don't is... Don't want to cause you, you. Cr- You've created this wonderful world. That I, and we were t- t- Chuck and I were talking about it. We're going to wrap it up, really. Look, Marvel, we, we trusted you. We put on the promise ring of the <laughs> Netflix series. We, we went to the altar. We're standing there yeah. saying, I do. It's time to consummate. Like, yeah. yeah, it's I time to gone solo in like three days, and I really need it. <laughs> it's like we need we need this thing. You've brought these wonderful characters. You've made street level characters that we actually care about and enjoy. And you need to start linking it to the other characters to bring them depth. And whatever, if it's paying a dude a bunch of money to go away as your TV executive, so that you can do that and put Kevin Feige in front of everything, Ooh. do it. I, I honestly, I'm going to have to second that motion there. But as we start to wrap <laughs> things up here, I just want to say that our artist spotlight segments are taken off. So obviously look for Adult Swim to be airing our Hunter Womack interview starting oh, tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday. Went amazing. Yeah. He is the nicest dude. Now a new friend of the show. He's going to be coming come back. Here or did he No, we Skype. Skype but um, we're going to be doing all kinds of crazy stuff with him. He's got some new shows that he's pitching to Adult Swim that he's going to be coming to us about. He's getting us some other cast members of the show. Oh, cool. And he's going to be on repeatedly. Couldn't have been nicer. So Hunter, uh, obviously a huge show. Work. And uh, we have also got a great interview with someone from Marvel coming up. I can't really announce all that until the red tape is filled because there's a Marvel sh- sharpshooter somewhere that will take me out. But uh, next week's artist spotlight will be a man named Jason no. Hurst, who I met on Facebook, Let who does these the amazing... I've been waiting all episode to show this off. Uh, now, Anthony understands the significance of this issue, but Jason Hurst takes any comic cover you can imagine... Uh, and makes these amazing laser-etched wood pieces. Now, I know you can't really see the quality on this. When we do the full spotlight Bring with him up. next week, Bring you will. The camera. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll walk this up. But he even put my name and my symbol in the back. Took him four hours. Take Here, your I'll favorite comic so cover. You and literally, this dude, his work is incredible. I mean, his Facebook gallery of the pieces he's made are incredible. The prices are insane. And he gave me this piece free just for talking about it. So I cannot wait to do the artist spotlight on him and see what Robert and Anthony get for their pieces as well. So stay tuned for that next Friday Mm -hmm. as we will all have a piece to review and it will be very exciting. So I think that is going to wrap things up for us here this week. So make sure you tune in next week when we will be talking all things Mirror Master and starting to hype up Doctor Strange as well as our interview Mm -hmm. with Jason Hurst of Works by Hurst on Facebook. Make sure you check him out. So that thing's going to wrap this up this week for Get Your Geek On Podcast. I've been Charles Kiewatz. Robert Dokes. Anthony Arsenio. Have a week!